Good evening and welcome once again to the Joy Learning Channel. Tonight we are having the revision show. And of course, you know what we are doing here. I want to especially welcome our amazing students watching us from across the 16 regions of Ghana and beyond. We are having this educational platform because it is meant to help you to be able to prepare for the examination. As you prepare for examination, there are certain things that you need to consider. My name is Mr. Francis Apia Foucault. And tonight, we are going to have an interesting discussion. Our topic is very important, matrices. I hope you remember what matrix means. Well, we are going to sit and go back and look at how we can be able to define what is a matrix. We'll look at the introduction from the beginning. I want you to get your notebooks, your calculators, call a friend, and let's start the show. Welcome. Tonight, we are going to start from the introduction. We are going to look at the first part is the introduction. We'll look at what is a matrix. We'll look at the addition and the subtraction of matrices. We'll look at the inverse of a matrix and also the multiplication. Apart from that, we'll look at both objective and the essay type of questions that we'll be having in the examination. And then we'll also look at the order of your presentation in the examination. That counts a lot. And finally, we'll look at the distribution of the marks. The definition of a matrix. We say a matrix is a rectangular array of m by n numbers in the form of m horizontal lines called rows and n vertical lines called columns. Therefore, we are going to say that this part of matrix becomes an m by n order, which is written as m by n matrix. So such an array is enclosed by brackets. So anytime you see a matrix, you always see them enclosed in a form of bracket. Then we come down to what is a 2 by 2 matrix. A 2 by 2 matrix is usually written as in the form A equals, the brackets are there, A, B, and C, D, where we say that our A, B was given us an entry. That is the first row, the first column. The second one becomes the first row for the second column. And then we have C, which is this time around, the second row, but also the first column and then D, which is also the second row and the second column. For a 3 by 3 matrix, we usually have it written as in the form. Of course, as you can see there, we have this as a 3 by 3 matrix. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and then I. So you can see that this part is what you call the row. And when you go down, we have this is the column, the column that we are going to be referring to. So anytime we are naming a matrix, we name them by the row and column method. So you have three by three, that is you have three rows and three columns. Let's start with the identity matrix. The identity matrix. This is defined as an identity matrix has the following entries. We have for a two by two matrix, the entries are one, zero, zero, and one. And we call this an identity or a unit matrix, which has only one entry. Then we have what we call the addition and the subtraction. To add a matrix or to subtract, we always say that a matrix can be added or subtracted. But first of all, we must be careful as to the order in which the matrix is written. So for this example, we have if M is a 2 by 2 matrix, given by the entries 2, 3, 4, and 2. And matrix N is defined as 1, 4, negative 1, and 3. We want to find the M plus N matrix. We want to calculate M plus N matrix. So this will be our solution. First of all, we are going to write our M by N matrix starting from the M matrix is giving us 2, 3, 4, and then 2. Then we have another matrix N, which is also defined as 1, negative 1, 4, and 3. So when we want M by N or M plus N, we are going to add the row by column. We have your 4 and 2, adding to your 1, negative 1, 
4, and then 3. So here, our addition, of course, we know that the first row will be added to the first row of the first second matrix. The next one will be 3 plus what? 4. Another 4 plus negative 1. And then finally, 2 plus 3. And that will result in a beautiful matrix of entry 3, 7, another 3, and then the last one is 5. So that is how we add a matrix. I believe you are following carefully because we'll be doing exciting examples for you to try on. The next question, which starts with, if P, if P is a matrix of entry 3, negative 1, 2, and negative 4, and Q, another matrix Q named as negative 1, 5, 3, and 2. What will be the entry or the matrix 3P minus Q? The matrix 3P minus Q. Now our solution. We want to say that for the first part, our matrix P has been given as 3, negative 1, 2, and negative 4. Another matrix Q has also been defined as negative of 1, 5, 3, and 2. So we can find 3P minus Q by multiplying, of course, 3 times P, 3, negative 1, 2, and negative 4. Then we subtract it from the matrix negative of 1, 5, 3, and then 2. This is what we call a scalar multiplication. So it means that the multiplication of the matrix will give us a new matrix of 9, minus 3, 6, and then negative of 12. Subtracting from another matrix, negative 1, 5, 3, and then 2. I believe you can do the subtraction. What is 9? Negative, negative of 1. Another entry of minus 3, minus 5. We have 6 minus of 3. And then negative 12, also minus 2. And that will give us a new answer. Our 3P minus Q is the matrix. 10 negative of 8, 3, and then negative 14. So this becomes our solution for this interesting question that we have. The question was find the matrix 3P minus Q. Let's take a look at another interesting example or question. And this time around, the question reads, question number 3. The question, question number 3. We have... The multiplication of the matrix is giving us if A and B are two matrices where A is defined as A, B, C, and D, and B is the matrix E, F, G, and H. Then the matrix AB, which is the multiplication, becomes very interesting. And I want you to pay close attention to how the order and the pattern goes. This time around, we are going to go by what you call the row by the column multiplication. The row by column multiplication. And so your row by column multiplication will give you a matrix AB as defined by A plus E. Then you have another B Then we have another B, also multiplying G. So you have AE plus the matrix BG. That will cover the first row and the first column. Then you move to the next column, and so you repeat the same row by column multiplication. And that will give you an A times F plus a B times H. That will cover the first row. Then you come to the second row, multiplying again by the same column. That will give you a C by E plus 
a d by g. And finally, you have your c times f plus your d times h. So we have what you call the row by column multiplication for a matrix. So we can take a good example to identify how to multiply a matrix. Let's look at the question. Given that P is the matrix minus 2, 3, 4, and 1, and Q is the matrix minus 3, minus 6, minus 4, and minus 6. Again, find the matrix, and the matrix is defined as P times Q. So we are multiplying the matrix P by the matrix Q. Let's consider the solution for now. The matrix P times Q is the same as the matrix minus 2, 3, 4, and 1, multiplying the matrix minus 3, minus 6, minus 4, and then negative 6. So remember we said we are going to have the row by column multiplication. So I'm going to use the first row to multiply the first column of the second matrix. And that will give us a good representation. Minus 2 times negative 3 plus, this time, 3 times negative of 4. Then you finish for that expression. You move to the next one. Minus 2 multiply negative of 6 plus another 3 times another negative of 6. Very beautifully done. You move to the next row, and here you have the next expression, 4 times negative of 3, plus the same 1 times negative of 4. Remember, you are going by the row by column multiplication, so you continue the next 4 times negative of 6, plus 1 times negative of 6. Then you simplify, and that simplification will give us a matrix P times Q, as positive of 6 plus negative of 12. Then we have another 12 positive, negative of 18. You have minus of 12 again, minus 4, and then negative of 24 minus 6. When you use your calculator, you can get the value of matrix PQ, and that will give us the matrix as negative of 6, entry, another negative of 6 as the second expression, you have minus of 16, and then negative of 30. So that becomes our row by column multiplication of a matrix. I believe you are following carefully because we are going to have another question which will give us that same expression. But before we do that, let's come to the determinant. When we say the determinant of a matrix, what is the meaning? The determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is said to be, by definition, determinant of A, or in denoting form, we have A with those two bars. If A is the matrix A, B, C, and D, if A is the matrix A, B, C, and D, then the determinant of the matrix is given by A times D minus B times C. So that is the determinant of a matrix. And we can quickly look at another example to see how to solve for a determinant of a matrix. Question number four. If the matrix is given as the determinant X5 minus four and six, is equal to the number 38. What is the value of x? Find the value of x in this matrix. So from the beginning, they are telling you to find the determinant. Of course, the determinant is equal to 38. So if the determinant is 38, then can we use the formula for finding the determinant to be able to find the value of x? I hope you get the question. So this will be our solution. For our solution, we know that the determinant is the multiplication. So we have x, we have 5, we have negative of 4, and we have 6. Now it's equal to the value of 38. So by multiplication, 
x times 6 minus the 5 times the negative of 4 will be the value of 38. This can be reduced to 6 of x minus, of course, positive of 20, and that is 38 value. Now you can quickly simplify your 6 of x equals to 38 minus 20. And finally, we can simplify further. Our 6x is the expression 18. So x will be what? 18 divided by 6, and that is 3. So we have found the value of x, and that answer is 3. This is how we find the determinant. And of course, we are going to see other exciting, interesting examples given. Before we continue, I want us to quickly look at an important part of matrices. We call it the inverse of a matrix. So what is the inverse of a matrix? If A is a matrix, if A is a matrix, then the inverse of A is denoted by A inverse and is given by A inverse as equal to 1 over the determinant. And remember what we just did is the determinant times what you call the adjoint of A. So what is the meaning of the adjoint? Now, if the matrix A has a zero determinant, so if you calculate and the determinant of the matrix is zero, then it means that A or matrix A has no inverse. So we can go ahead and find the inverse of the matrix if, for example, our determinant is zero. Now, given that matrix A is the entry A, B, C, and D, the inverse matrix is denoted by A inverse, giving us 1 over the determinant times the adjoint. And look at how the adjoint is written. The adjoint is D and A, negative B, negative of C. So that would be our adjoint. And we are going to solve an example with it so that you'll be able to familiarize yourself when we talk about what you mean by the inverse of a matrix. So let's look at an interesting question. If P, if P is the matrix 5, 3, 3, 2, find P inverse. Find what? P inverse, the inverse of this matrix. And so we are going to look at what is the inverse of this matrix. Let's consider the solution. Our solution will be, first of all, the P inverse is equal to 1 over the adjoint, before we that, the determinant, times the adjoint. And that is what? 2 minus of 3, and then minus of 3, and then 5. That will be our adjoint. So we need to find, of course, the determinant of P. And what is the determinant of P? Determinant is 5 times 2 minus 3 times 3. And what is the value? We have 10 and then minus 9. And the answer is positive 1. So we know our determinant now is 1. And therefore, we are going to substitute this determinant into our expression. This time around, we are going to have our P inverse as 1 over 1 times the determinant 2 minus 3 minus of 3 and then times 5. And therefore, we can simplify further and write P inverse as the value of 2 minus of 3 negative of 3 and then positive of 5 as the inverse of this matrix. So you have to first of all calculate the determinant first, which will help you to know whether indeed this matrix has an inverse or not. Then you follow the formula or the expression that we just used to be able to find this inverse. Let's look at an interesting example again. This time, the matrices of two linear transformation, A and B, are given by A, this time around, your A is negative of 1, 4, 
0, and 3. And then you have another matrix B. The matrix B is 2, negative of 5, 1, and minus of 3. We have to find the matrix C such that A times C plus 3B squared is equal to I. And where I is the 2 by 2 matrix or unit matrix. So we are looking for a matrix which is given by C. But we are using the expression A times C plus 3 times B squared and is equal to 1. I, sorry. Where I is what? The 2 by 2 unit matrix. And remember we said the 2 by 2 unit matrix has entries 1, 0, 0, and 1. So this will be our solution. To begin with, we need to find, of course, first of all, let our matrix C be a 2 by 2 matrix. And C can be entry A, B, C, and D. So we know that C is a matrix of entry A, B, C, and D. And therefore, when we solve B of squared, we want to say that the 2 negative of 5, the 1 negative of 3, will be multiplying another 2 negative of 5, 1 negative of 3. Now, this multiplication, remember we did the matrix multiplication, will be 2 times 2 plus negative of 5 times 1, another 2 times negative of 5 plus another negative of 5 times negative of 3. Then when you come to the next expression, 1 times 2 plus negative of 3 times 1, we have 1 times negative of 5 plus negative of 3 times negative of 3. So we are doing what you call the row by column multiplication. So each row will multiply another column. And when you do that, you are going to have the various entries as shown. Then we can say that the solution becomes, for a course, we have 4 minus of 5. We have minus of 10 plus 15. We have 2 minus of 3. And finally, we have minus of 5 plus 9. And of course, when you solve this, you are going to have an interesting value. This is negative of 1. We have another 5. You have negative of 1 again, and we have 4. So that is just for b squared. Now we are going to substitute this b squared and take our time and multiply it by c. Now after that, remember we said a times c, then we have plus 3 times b squared. So our expression now becomes the value of the value of we have 1 minus 1 4 0 and 3 multiplying a, b, c, and d, and then plus three times your multiplication of the matrix minus one, five, minus one again, and four. And this is equal to the unit matrix zero, zero, and one. So we have been able to now get the b squared. We are multiplying a times c also, and we are adding them together. That is why we did the addition, we did the multiplication, and so we are applying them. Now, what will be our entries? We are going to multiply the A times C. And from the multiplication, we are going to have an interesting expression of minus of A plus 4C. We have minus of B plus 4D. We have 3 of C. We have another of D plus another multiplication again minus 3 we have 15 we have negative of 3 and then we have 12 and all equal to another unit matrix 1 0 and 0 1 now we know that if you are going to equate these two matrix then we are going to deduce some interesting linear equations one of them will be the negative of A plus 4C, this time around, plus 3, will be equal to 1. So we can call this equation 1. 
Then again, we can have another equation, minus b plus 4d plus 15, and that is 0. So we have another equation 2. Then we have another 3 of c is equal to negative of 3. This is the same as positive. So that is positive. So we have another positive value. This is 3c equal to positive of 3. 3c equal to positive of 3. So that is equation 3, given 3c is equal to positive of 3. So we have another question. This time around, when we have the last question, remember we said this is equal to the expression 3d plus 12 is equal to 1, will be the fourth equation. So the fourth equation becomes 3d plus 12 equal to 1 as equation 4. Now that we have these four equations, we need to solve them linearly. And so by solving them linearly, we are going to have for C, the answer to be 1. So C becomes 1. The next value of A, we need to calculate for A. So A will also be another answer. A will be 0. We'll also get another answer for B, and B will be 1 over 3. And finally, our D will be negative 11 over 3. So the answer for the value of C, the answer for the value of C becomes this time around, the value of C is the expression C equals 0, 1 over 3, 1 minus 11 over 3 as the value of C. Now this is one method that we have used. We have another method which can also be used. And so we are going to look at the second alternative method. The first one, we use the linear equations to solve for A, B, and C, and D. But for the second one, this will be our solution. And our solution will be starting from the AC, which is equal to I minus 3B squared. And so our AC will be the unit matrix minus 3 times another expression, negative of 3, negative of 3, 15, and then 12. So here, remember, I've been able to multiply. I've been able to multiply to be able to get this expression. Now, AC becomes, the value of AC becomes 4, minus 15, 3, and the negative of 11. The AC becomes 4, minus 15, 3, and the negative 11. And therefore, this expression can also be said that C will be the inverse multiplying I minus 3B of squared the inverse multiplying i minus 3b squared. So let's take a look at the inverse of the matrix. Our inverse matrix will give us, therefore, that we are going to find the inverse of A. So A inverse will now be 1 over A times the adjoint, 3 negative of 4, 0 negative of 1. And this A inverse, remember how to find the inverse that is minus of 3 minus 0 is equal to negative of 3. Now C expression will now be the negative 1 over 3 multiplying 3, negative 4, 0, negative of 1 times the matrix 4 minus of 15, 3, and then negative of 11. And what will be the expression? Your C now becomes the value of 0, 1 over 3, 1, and then negative 11 over 3 also as our value of C. So we have used the identity to be able to solve. And we have also used the linear equations to be able to solve this example. Now let's come to another interesting question. The next question, we are going to look at another exciting question 
following this question. So the next question after this question becomes question number six. Question number six. And it reads, given that P is the value 1, 1, negative 1, 0, and Q is the value 2, 1, 3, and 4. And if I is the unit matrix, so what is the unit matrix? The unit matrix is a 2 by 2 matrix. Find the matrix M. Find the matrix M, given that P plus Q into bracket times M is equal to I. P plus Q into bracket times M is equal to I. Let's take a look at our solution. And of course, remember, we are going to look at the linear method and we are going to look at the identity method of solution. So the linear method. Our P plus Q will be the expression 1, 1, negative 1, 0, plus our 3, 2, sorry, 1, 3, and 4. And that will give us an answer, and that will give us equal to the value of 3, 2, 2, and 4. Now, we want to let our M represent another matrix, A, B, C, and D. So this becomes our matrix M. So we can say that the matrix 3, 2, 2, and 4, multiplying the matrix A, B, C, and D, will be equal to the matrix 1, 0, 0, and 1. And you can remember how to multiply the matrix. We will get our matrix to be 3A plus 2C, another 3B plus 2 of D. Then we have 2 of A plus 4C. We have another 2B plus 4D. And still equal to the matrix 1, 0, 0, and 1 as our entry. We can now take our time and deduce the linear equations. So the first linear equation you are going to write will be the equation 3a. The first equation will be 3a plus 2 of c and is equal to 1. Then the next one will be another 3b plus 2d and is equal to 0. Then we can have another 2a plus 4c equal to 0. And the last one, another 2 of b plus 4 of d is equal to 1 as equation 4. So after solving these four equations, we'll be able to derive at a as 1 over 2, rb will be negative 1 over 4, our c matrix or value or entry will be 1 over 4, and finally, our D is the same as 3 over 8. So the matrix M will be the matrix 1 over 2, minus 1 over 4, minus 1 over 4, and then 3 over 8. So this is our M matrix. Now let's take a look at the solution using the identity method. And so we are going to consider that a matrix M inverse multiplying itself will be equal to the identity matrix I. So in other words, the inverse matrix is the matrix P plus Q. So we can say that any time we multiply M, we are going to have M as M inverse times your identity matrix because a matrix multiplying the identity matrix is the same matrix. So we know that our inverse matrix, because P plus Q is the answer 3, 2, 2, and 4, the inverse matrix will be what? We need to find, first of all, the determinant. So what will be our determinant? The determinant of matrix M 
will give us the expression 3 times 4 minus 2 times 2. And that is 12 minus 4, which is 8. So we know our matrix has a determinant of 8. Therefore, our matrix becomes the expression as 1 over 8 times 4, negative of 2, negative of 2, and then 3. And we can take our time and write it beautifully. This is the same as 4 over 8, and then minus 1 over 4, another negative 1 over 4, and then 3 out of 8. Now we know that this matrix multiplying the M inverse times the I. So multiplying it by 1, 0, 0, 1 will give us a value of 1 over 2, negative 1 over 4, another negative 1 over 4, and then finally 3 out of 8 as the matrix that we are looking for. So we have seen how to solve using, first of all, the linear form of solving using the linear equations and also using what you call the identity matrix. Now let's take a look at another interesting question. This time around, we are talking about question number five. And question number five, sorry, question number seven, we are going to discuss the question given if M, M is the matrix 3, 4, 1, and 2, and N is another matrix. N is another matrix 2, 1, negative 1, and 2. And I is the identity matrix, or the 2 by 2 unit matrix. Can we find the value of 2 times M minus N plus I? The question again, if M is the matrix 3, 4, 1, and 2, and N is another matrix 2, 1, negative of 1, and 2, and I is the 2 by 2 unit matrix, which has entries 1, 0, 0 and 1. Then find the value of 2m minus n plus i. Let's consider our solution for this question. Our solution begins by first of all the expression 2m minus n plus the identity matrix i is the same as 2 times 3, 4, 1 and 2 minus another 2, 1, negative of 1, and 2, plus the identity, 1, 0, 0, and 1. Now you are multiplying the matrix by 2, so that will give us 6, 8, 2, and then 4. Again, negative sign, 2, 1, negative of 1, and 2, plus your 1, 0, 0, and 1. And finally, when you are taking each row and each entry, we are going to have 6 minus 2 plus 1. We have 8 minus 1 plus 0. We have 2 plus 1 plus 0. And finally, we have 4 minus 2 plus 1. And that should give us a beautiful answer which you are going to write as the answer becomes 5, 7, 3, and then another 3. So that becomes the answer for 2 times M minus N plus I. Very beautiful. Another interesting example, remember we are using both essay type and then the objective type of questions. So you can see from the question 8 that we have given that M is the matrix 2, negative of 1, 3, 1. And another matrix N, this entry is 0, 5, 2, and 3. Now find the matrix Q. So the matrix Q is such that Q is giving us 2 times the matrix N minus the matrix M. So you are multiplying the matrix N by 2. 
then you are subtracting it from the matrix M to give you matrix Q. Let's consider our solution. The first one, of course, Q is equal to 2 times your entry 0, 5, 2, and 3, minus the matrix entry 2, negative 1, 3, and then 1. And this will give us a matrix of entry 0, 10, 4, and then 6 minus the matrix 2, minus 1, 3, and then 1. So the matrix Q we are looking for is the answer minus 2. 0 minus 2 is still minus of 2. 10 minus negative 1 is positive 11. Then 4 minus 3 is positive 1. And finally, 6 minus 1 is positive Five is positive 5. So we had this expression as 6. This was the expression as 2 times 3, and that was given as 6. So the answer was the value negative 2, 11, 1, and 5. We have seen how we have been able to apply the inverse. We have also seen how to multiply. We've seen how to add and subtract. We have also seen the how to use the adjoint. We want to take another interesting example, also a past question, to see how these questions are set in examination. The question number nine, and it reads, if the determinant of a matrix and the entries are seven minus two, 3x and 5 is equal to 37. Find the value of x. Find the value of x. So we are going to consider the determinant of a matrix. And we know how to find the determinant. So using that explanation, we are going to say that our solution is, and therefore our solution starts from, we are going to multiply, we have 7 minus 2, 3x, and this was 5. And this is equal to 37. So we are going to multiply the 7 times the 5, and therefore we are going to have minus 3 of x times negative of 2. And this should be equal to your answer of 37. Now your 7 times 5 is 35. The negative negative multiplies to give us positive of what? 6 of x. And that should equal to 37. Students, remember, you have to simplify further because 6x will be equal to 37 minus 35. And the value of the 6 of x will be equal to positive 2. x now is 2 divided by 6. And the answer will be 1 out of 3. So that gives us an interesting, beautiful solution to questions that demand that the student use the determinant to solve the question. Then we come to another interesting principle. Using the next question, I will explain it. Two matrices, M and N, are defined by M giving us 2, 0, and then 1, 2. And n is 2, 0, negative 1, and 2. We are looking for the matrix M minus 2n. The matrix is M minus 2 of n. Let's see how we can consider this interesting question. By solution, our M matrix has been given as 2, 0, 1, and 2. Our n has also been defined as 2, 0, negative of 1, and 2. So what we mean by m minus 2n is simply multiply 2, 0, 1, 2, minus 2 times the matrix 2, 0, negative 1, and then 2. 
and I know you can do that. Now that you have your expression, your value of 2, 0, 1, and 2 becomes the negative of 4, 0, negative of 2, and then 4. This time around, as you take your time and do the simplification, you will realize that 2 minus 4, let's continue, 2 minus 4, we have 0 minus 0, we have 1 minus negative of 2, and then 2 minus 4. And so our final answer for the question m minus 2n is given as the answer negative 2, 0, 3, and then negative of 2. So the entries are negative 2, 0, 3, and negative 2. Before we continue, I hope you have seen how these questions are asked in examination. And students are expected to be able to simplify as far as possible so that we can be able to give you the full marks given in the example. Consider the next example, question 11. If P is the entry, so we have another matrix P, 1, 2, 4, and 3. And Q is the matrix 1, 2, 3, and 1. We want to find the expression P squared minus Q squared. What is the meaning of P squared? It means the matrix P multiplying itself. Then what is Q squared? The matrix Q multiplying itself. So we learned how to multiply matrix. We are going to use the multiplication approach, the row by color multiplication. Then after we have gotten the values, we are going to take the difference of the two. So we start by looking at, first of all, the multiplication. The multiplication of the matrix. So this is our solution. The first one, for p squared, this expression will leave us to 1, 2, 4, and then 3, multiplying the same matrix 1, 2, 4, and 3. And students, we are going to use what you call the row by column multiplication, and that will give us 1 plus 8, 2 plus 6. So 1 times 1 is 1. Then 2 times 4 is 8. Then we have 1 times 2 is 2. And 2 times 3 is 6. Then we have 4 plus 12. That is 4 times 1 is 4. And 3 times 4 is 12. Then we have another expression, 8 plus 9, which is 4 times 2 is 8. And 3 times 3 is 9. And that will give us a beautiful p squared as the entry 9, 8, 16, and 17. So we have found p squared. Let's turn our attention and find the value of q squared. So what is q squared? The value of Q squared will be 1, 2, 3, 1, multiplying 1, 2, 3, 1. And just like we did for P, we are going to do the same for Q. So our multiplication will lead us to 1 plus 6, which is 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 3 is 6. Then we move to the next column by using the first row. We are going to have 1 times 2, which is 2, plus 2 times 1, which is still 2. Now we come to the second rule. On the second rule, we are using the rule to multiply the second or the first column first. So we are going to start by saying 3 times 1 is still 3. Then 1 times 3 is another 3. Then you move to the next expression. The same second row multiplying now the second column. 
So the second row times the second column, giving us 3 times 2, 6, plus another 1 times 1, which is still 1. Now you can take your time and do the addition. That will give us the entry 7, 4, 6, and 7. Then we come to the main part, which was for us to solve p squared minus q squared. So let's consider how the subtraction will be like. For the subtraction, your p squared minus q squared will leave us with the entries that we had 9, 8, 16, and 17 minus the matrix 7 and 4, 6 and 7. So here again, when you do your subtraction, we have 9 minus 7, we have 8 minus 4 again, we have 16 minus 6, and we have 17 minus 7. And that should give us an answer of 2, 4, 10, and finally 10 also as the answer. So this is P squared minus Q squared. So you see how we were able to start from P squared, solving the Q squared, and then looking at the subtraction of the two. So that is a very good example for us to remember and solve questions under metrics, which was very important. Consider the next example that we have. The next example, this time around, we are going to say that given that A is a matrix, and A is a matrix of 2, negative 5, 6, and 1, and B is another matrix given by the answers of 3, negative 2, negative 4, and 5. Now we want to find 2 times the matrix A minus 3 times the matrix B. 2 times the matrix of A minus 3 times the matrix of B. Let's consider our solution as given by the examiners. The solution, we want to find 2 times A, and of course that is 2 times 2 minus 5, 6, and 1. And that should give us an answer of 4, negative 10, 12, and then 2. Then we want 3 times B. So again, 3 times what? The matrix B. 3, negative 2, negative 4, and then 5. And that should give us another beautiful 9, 9 or 6, minus 12, and then 15. Once we have this expression, we can now take our time and find 2 of A minus 3 of B. And that should give us the beautiful expression 4 minus 10, 12, and 2, minus, again, 9 minus 6 minus 12, and then 15. When you take your time, you will be able to simplify your work and get the answer for 2 of A minus 3 of B as negative of 5, negative of 4, 24, and then minus 13. Now, I want you to consider this important information. Some students are fond of using brackets as a way of separation. Please be advised not to do that because this is metrics. We don't have any bracket within our entries. Again, some students are also fond of using the bracket sign to separate. This is also not done. The entries are always given in this form, as you have seen on the question. Another interesting example this time to give us a beautiful solution is given that A is the answer or the expression 2, 1, 1, and 2. And B is the values of 4, 3, 2, and 1. Find B squared minus A. And I'll take you through the solution so that you see how you can take your time and present your solution 
in examination. So our solution, we are going to start by looking at the square of B. So B squared, remember, simply means that we are going to solve our B4, 3, 2, and 1 times another 4, 3, 2, and 1. So we are going to multiply. And remember, we have gone through the row by column multiplication. So we are going to take it again and see how we can multiply. This is how we multiply. This time around, we know what is the expression. The row by column. So 4 times 4, which is what? 16 plus 3 times 2, which is 6. Then we have another 4 times 3, which is 12, plus another 3 times 1, which is 3. Then we have 2 times 4, which will give us 8, plus another 1 times 2, which is 2. Then we move to the next or the last rule and then the last column, which is 2 times 3, which is 6, plus again 1 times 1, which is 1. Now you can take your time and simplify, and that should give us an entry of 22, 15, 10, and 7. Now you have found B squared. But remember, the question was for us to find B squared minus A. So we are now going to subtract the B squared from A. So B squared minus A will be the entry 22, 15, 10, and 7 minus another entry 2, 1, 1, and 2. So we are finding B squared minus A. And now you can take your time and find the value. We have 22 minus 2, 15 minus 1. We have 10 minus 1 again, and 7 minus 2. And your answer will give us the value of 20, 14, 9, and 5. That will be our solution. We have seen how to start by looking at a matrix as a 2 by 2 matrix. We have seen how to use what we call the row by column multiplication. We have also gone ahead to look at the multiplication, the addition, and the subtraction of matrices. We have also looked at some objective test questions and also looked at some essay test questions. So it's not only in objective tests that you see matrices. You can also, they can also be asked in the essay. So you need to present your solution in a way that will fetch you a lot of the marks. By taking your time and expressing them and making sure that all your entries are correct, you resist the chance of making mistakes in your solution. Let's take a look at another interesting question. This time around, question 14. Given that matrix A, given that matrix A, and matrix A is the expression 8 minus 2, 5, and 3. 8 minus 2, 5, and 3. Find the determinant. So the first question is, we have to look for the determinant. And then we'll look for what you call the inverse. The determinant first and then we'll look at the inverse. The determinant first, and then we'll look at the inverse. So let's consider the determinant first. What is the determinant of a matrix? The determinant gives us an expression. And so the value of the determinant will tell us whether we should go ahead and find the inverse or not. Remember, we made a statement that if the determinant is 0, then it means that our matrix has no inverse. But if the determinant is a value, then it means that we can go ahead and look for the inverse of the matrix. So by finding the determinant, the matrix A, which is giving us 8 minus 2, 5, and 3, has a determinant of A, and your determinant is the same as 8 times 3, 
minus the minus of 2 times 5. So when you solve for the matrix, you are going to have 24 minus negative of 10. And therefore, your 24 plus 10 will give us the beautiful answer of 34. So that is the determinant. And, no, we, and we know that this determinant tells us um, gives us an indication that we can go ahead and find what the inverse. So we are going to look for the inverse of this matrix. And how do you find the inverse? By the rule that we have, the inverse of a matrix is equal to 1 over the determinant of A times the adjoint. The adjoint becomes, this time around, 3 and 8 and positive 2 and negative of 5. So that is our adjoint. So we know that the inverse, A inverse, is 1 over 34 times the adjoint, 3, negative of 5, 2, and then 8. So we have been able to find our inverse matrix. And remember, anytime you multiply your inverse by the same matrix, it should give you what? The identity matrix. Anytime you multiply the inverse by the same matrix, it gives you the identity matrix. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll see how to solve an exciting example again. <laughs>